This podcast is brought to you by Brown and Whitward Foundation. When you're thinking about foundations, think about the colors. Call my man Brown and Whiteworth. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll run it. Brown and Whitward Foundation. You can't even call the foundation. So good luck finding them. The holiday season is over, but drunk driving isn't. You wouldn't want to be home having a great dinner, and then a drunk driver comes, gets into an accident, flies its car in the air, and it goes through your roof and kills your entire family. And sure, you could take the easy way out and blame the drunk driver, but it's your fault for not having a great roof over your family's head. Guess what, guys? You didn't call. You killed your whole family. Not only that, the survivors have your debt that you've acquired and you were going to take care of one day, and then they got to pay it off. Your child is going to have to pay it off. And you know what? You had no problem getting that debt. Why don't you get some more debt and get yourself a roof so this can't happen to your children? You guys, quit being irresponsible and protect yourselves. Call Affordable Roofing. Call my man, Tony. He'll help protect your family by putting a good roof over their head. That's the original Affordable Roofing Company. 423-593-9605. That's the Affordable Roofing Company. Protect yourself. Protect your family. You can't put a dollar sign on your life. 423-593-9605. You guys have the internet. You got Instagram, you got YouTube, you got plenty of sources to watch just normal people recording videos. You've seen it too. The videos where they squat and then on the way down, they poop out their organs. You all seen it, you all know what I'm talking about. This, this, these videos been circulating before YouTube was invented. This has been an ongoing problem since weights have been invented. And I know you guys want to get in the best shape ever. You have New Year's resolutions to it. But just going to the gym, you risk the fact of pooping your organs. Why? Because you just don't know what you're doing. You need a professional. You need someone that's going to make sure your organs stay inside your body as you squat. And achieve those big sexy legs for the new year. Call my man Captain Cranberry at 108 Personal Training. 951-445-3133. Don't be fooled by the numbers. They're close. They're just, they're rock springs. Great place to be. There's a spring, a couple of rocks. See the nature, meet some wildlife like Bowser. 10-8 10-8 personal training, Welcome to the Militia MMA Podcast. This is the first podcast of the new year, 2023, and I'm your host, Tom Galicchio, as well as your guest, Tom Galicchio. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. So let's recap 2022. We had a pretty good year. Shoot, I started the year off, uh, my dad died. That was sad. Oh, sad. That was sad. That's okay. Everyone dies. But so that was the start of my new year. But actually, pretty much a year from today, we uh, had our first set of fighters fighting the PKB. And it was great because uh, I trained everybody way too hard. Like it was. A professional fight for the PKB and was very mad when people weren't held accountable like and I said we're just gonna go in there and try to knock everybody out in this no knockout tournament and let's train hard as fuck 
And we did. We trained really hard. We had about 12 people who wanted to do it, and I think we ended up with about six at the end. It was it was a it was a good time. I mean, that was the start. That was before we even had anybody fighting amateurs. So I think it was like January third. What's today's date? Today's the third. Oh, I gotta make sure I pay the bills after today. Oh man, I hope my landlord doesn't show up because I ran out of checks, and those things don't come overnight. I went to Walmart and waited in line for it, and then it just. I got to the end of the line, and they're like, we don't do checks. Your banker was lying, so I had to order them online. So anyway, I strayed. Start of our, our team competition. Uh, George fought. Broderick fought. Colton fought. George, Broderick, Colton. Montana fought. Uh, Josh fought. I feel like there was six. Oh, there we had some guy. We had uh, one of our old students, John, fought. John. Little Ginger, how you doing, John? We miss you. Um, yeah, John fought. I think we went like six and three. So it was a good showing. Uh, uh, it should have been like seven and two. But Montana dropped this guy in the finals. And the other guy wasn't more proud to get his hand raised as he hit the canvas, as he hit the mat. And those events are the fucking worst. Like, the guy who runs it puts on a way too long of a meeting. He spoke about how his thing, his rules, helped cure COVID. And he's better. And how we're going to be competing with the UFC in no knockout sparring. But we're going to be on that level. Uh, that was... The start of the rules meeting. I, I remember Eric, Big Eric came out. He's like, that guy wouldn't shut the fuck up. And then he's like, we got this no knockout event. But we're also doing Muay Thai fights at night. So we're going to let you guys fight on these mats next to the ring. So that was good, though. We went 6-2. and two. Uh, It was actually funny, too, because uh, George... Beat the crap out of his guy. And his guy only landed one punch. But it was like a hammer fist. In the middle of getting clobbered. That like hit George gently on the head. And then they yelled at the guy. They're like hey. That's illegal. But the guy was just getting his ass beaten. And he flailed. I was even like what are you doing? Cut the guy some slack. He's getting beat up. Let his flail to get away. Count as a point. Or whatever the fuck you wanted. Let him. It's a rough day for him. That was good. Then a couple of guys. Then we had the grappling tournament. A couple of guys won. Josh won. George won. They earned their ability to fight amateur. Mary won too. Mary was fighting amateur. You know, Mary had her whole career before, but man, she's been here about a year. She came really, really far. Mary's making great progress and is very dedicated. Uh, which uh, we'll skip around a little bit. She's got her fight coming up since I'm talking about her. Man, she's made some good progress throughout the year. Definitely really happy where Mary's going and her work ethic and staying more focused in the room. She's kicking ass and she's defending her title. Uh, I'm very, very confident in her. I just got to make sure I check all the boxes personally on fight night and do my job uh and as long as i do that she should have no problem winning because i'm very confident in her I, I think if the slip up's gonna happen she's been training so well and working so hard it would kind of be fault on my own personally so yeah there i said it so let's uh when you guys hear this we'll see if i'm i'm eating my words so Mary's fighting. We got George making his pro debut sometime in March. Josh is going to be making his return. We're looking for a fight in February. Seeing if there are any callers. We might be we're, we might be hitting the road. We're like the fucking antique road show. They're like, I found this Civil War sword in my attic. How much is it worth? Sir, this is fake. It says medieval times on it. No, she wouldn't lie. 
That's my, that's my gammy. Or that's my Mima. My Mima was a Confederate soldier. No, you brought your Mima to the Olive Garden. Medieval times, fuck, same shit. It is pretty much. You eat, you eat with your hands at medieval times. You're eating breadsticks. They kind of look like swords. They kind of look like penises, or bread hot dogs. So yeah, 2023, medieval times, Olive Garden, same thing. But really, though, I think uh, probably the food quality is better at medieval times. The Olive Garden. Ugh, who likes olives? You like olives, Bobby? Uh, African-American olives. This is 2023. You racist faggot. (laughs) There's my neighbor Aaron walking by. How you doing? I wonder if he sees the sketchy people in the parking lot. Oh, by the way, neighbor Aaron next door. (laughs) That's the guy with the long beard and shaved head, usually smoking out front of the shop. Aaron's a super cool cat. And an MMA fan, too. So, he just likes the cigarettes. But he's a good dude. I really like it. The guys next door are really good guys at the tattoo shop. They're usually like, all right, if something's up, we check next door with the tattoo shop. Like, hey, what's going on? What's your power up? What's going on? Or, or the Dollar General, too, is like, hey... Well, since we're open the earliest, I always check in with the Dollar General. Like, everything good? Like, we were having the rolling blackouts. And I was like, oh, no. And I think somebody pulled up to the Mexican restaurant and then drove home. They're like, oh, no power. So I was like, oh, no. What's going on? We're just going to have to run. uh, Mary's got her fight. We're just going to have to run it without power. Not an issue. You really don't because a a turlet would still work. That's what they call it in the South, right? Turlets. Yeah, turlet would still work. But then the sun comes up. Power's just... It's just a creature of comfort. We had our water mistakenly go out twice. We made it happen. I, I remember I... There's no real woods right behind the gym. So I decided instead of the go look, I'll just low go out the door... And then just pull my penis out and start peeing. Like, at like 7 o'clock. And then, like, then the tattoo owner's wife pulled around the corner. And I had to, like, cover up real quick. And then I ran towards the woods by the dollar store. And then when the coast is clear, I had to go back and hose myself off with the shower. Because, yeah, yeah. When you're you're in your third after, like, 33, stopping is not that easy. Especially in distress. Actually, men out there, I've been told one of the best tricks ever. So when you're at the urinal, actually my buddy Jesse Taylor, actually funny fucking story about Jesse Taylor. Jesse Taylor was, New Year's Eve, so like big cards overseas usually happen New Year's Eve. It's a tradition of pride fighting. Pride fighting always had their biggest card of the year. Uh, which was New Year's Eve. So you'll catch a lot of these huge organizations overseas. They'll like try to do that. So what England's biggest organization is uh, Cage Warriors. So Jesse was the head main event. And, uh, and he's going to fight New Year's Eve as the main event. And I got to look in the morning and he's off the card. Turn to find out. Comes to fight comes to find out i came and then i found out no uh, i don't know why that needed a southern accent uh come to find out there there we go he got hit by a car the night before jesse got hit by a car not in a car either crossing the street in england in london he was crossing the street in london and got hit by a car I bet he expected them to stop. I bet they broke the law. They ran off. Hit <laughs> Rod see ya. I hope they know they ruined the main event. I hope their car's fucked up because Jesse's pretty dense. Yeah, Jesse got hit. Oh, it's sad. Like, add that to the legacy. Jesse's had 
had quite the career. He fought the best in the world and beat some of the best in the world. Then to just have issues with automobiles. And you know what, though? He had a corner there with him, and they didn't get hit by the car. Yeah. Nope. Was Jesse like, ah, nah, they'll stop. Or... What, did his cornermen let him just roam the streets alone? It was at 1 a.m. too. Well, uh, what uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Like, ah, why is he doing at 1? Well, usually like New Year's Eve card, they got to like make it ready for broadcast since it's on UFC Fight Pass. So it's like you don't want to go to sleep at 1 if you're fighting around 1. You don't want your body. You got to acclimate to whatever time you're uh, fighting, especially with time zones and everything. But. Also, if you fight in foreign areas, they will acclimate their fight card for for the U.S. market. Because I think the U.S. market, I'm almost 100% sure U.S., maybe North American market, is has to buy pay-per-views. Everywhere else, all the UFCs are free on a channel. There's like a fight network in some countries. So yeah, the story of Jesse getting hit by a car. I, I haven't got to talk to him. I gotta, I gotta talk to him and find out the dirt. So we're also working on something super important here at Militia. It's like a good side project that's, I, I think, gonna help elevate us, and let us know. And we're working on the Hot Dog King. So the Liver King. I don't know if you guys who know about him. I've never seen a video of him, but I just know of him because. He gets somehow roped into MMA. And I don't think it's because any of the fighters give a shit. I think it's like people who are a fan of fighting are also like, I'm also a fan of the Liver King. And it doesn't, not just like across the board, across the country. It's new fans. They're also fans of the Liver King. I guess it's new fans because they're all into the social media. And what does he do, Bobby? You know about him. Uh, he, he preaches. Uh, no, but like, where does he film his shit? Like, mostly at, like at UFC events and stuff. Oh, he films stuff every day, but yeah, he always makes a point to show that he's at a UFC event or. or yeah, he's or, trying to rope in. He's like the yeah, combat yeah. sports idiots will like me. He, like he, he makes the circuits of like bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. He does bodybuilding. Then, like comedians that are also involved in MMA, so Brendan Chubb and Theo Vaughn. They give him a platform? Yeah, I'll give him a platform. Him and Andrew Schultz are good friends. Oh. Yeah. What about uh, my man Gomez. Luis Gomez? No, nothing at all. Him and somebody else. Luis Gomez and he's he's think Jersey, but don't think uh super big. Shane. Shane Gillis? Shane Gillis. Is Shane Shane Gomez and Luis giving them platform? I don't think so, no. No, so. You know what's funny about those two? We, I was friends with them on Facebook, and I think I've met them before. Like, before they ever really took off. And then I just see them on everything. I don't know where they, 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 we've known each other, or if we really do, and just kind of like I was a fighter in 06. Somewhere along the way, we might have crossed paths. But it's cool to see those guys doing good. But I can't believe comedians would give this guy a platform. It's like kind of hacky. Especially because he was trying to push supplements and he lied. And you know what? That's where the hot dog king fills the void. So all right. The liver king took massive amounts of steroids and told everybody he was only going to eat liver. And then just walks around in like a loincloth with his shirt off. And then it just got caught. But that turns out he took steroids. I don't know how. How did he get caught? Um, his blood work got leaked. His blood work got leaked. Oh, man. So, and then the liver king got caught. Now he's like a, a, a sham, a hack. So now there's a, a void, a hole that needs to be filled. And that hole needs to be filled with hot dogs. The hot dog gang. Bobby at the last fight ate how many hot dogs? Uh, 13. 
Eight thirteen hot dogs. That means it's like closer to nineteen. I heard it was way more than that, and that you owe somebody hot dogs because you ate so much. He's like, how many? Oh, with my mouth or with my butt? You didn't say both. So here's what we're gonna do to elevate the gym. We're gonna have Bobby eat nothing but hot dogs and take steroids, and then he's gonna become the hot dog king. And then you're going to just see him. He's only going to wear white basketball shorts, and he's not going to wear a shirt. And then we're just going to juice him up. He's, I'm sure there's doctors that could help us with us, but we also need a steroid connect, too. I don't know where to get steroids. I've never done them. But there's all, like 100 people in this gym. You guys got to know somebody. Uh, we don't need them super expensive either, but Bobby's willing to part with some of his family's food money <laughs> to buy some hot dogs. I mean, to buy some. Unless you can tack on an extra sponsor, you could. Yeah, if we could get an extra sponsor to fund this. Could, you know what we need? <laughs> Hear me out on this Bobby and world. We need the sponsor, but we could do it as a loan. Because once you're making all that hot dog cake money, it's going to be pennies. I think it could take off. I really do. I, I, I think we can make the hot dog king a thing. Get him his crown. And well, he's going to be versatile. Like the liver king, as Bobby was saying earlier, goes everywhere. Like goes to events, weightlifting... So you'll be the hot dog king, so you go to, like, Nathan's, like, hot dog eating contest. You don't have to win them. I mean, shoot for the gold. Be the hot dog gobbler. Just, but be there. You just, they're going to appreciate it that you, like, get your hands dirty with the people. Or like, then get a picture of Joey Chestnut. You just see their fucking gobbling fucking dogs and they, when do they even do that? Like Super Bowl time they do the hot dog uh, eating? Yeah, yeah, so it'll be cold as yeah. cold as fuck. So you're, you'll be having your nipples like like high beams on, just ready to cut glass with just fucking ketchup and mustard dripping down and water from dipping the buns. 63 hot dogs. 63 and hot dogs is the record. Joey's and Chestnut? Buns. And buns. And buns, yeah. 63 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes is the world record. I know for a fact I can do 20. Bobby's good for 20. Yeah, what is the guy? We just, I don't know if you can it's make it. July 4th. Okay, July 4th. So you, it, you'll be good without the My shirt. The next day, so I might die. <laughs> what a way to go. So Bobby's birthday is July 5th. The Nathan's hot dogs thing is July 4th. But you just need, Bobby needs to get into contendership just so he could be there and get the presents. I guess the ultimate goal would be like an Oscar Mayer Wiener sponsorship or Nathan's or Ballpark. But I'm behind the cot dog gang. We just got to figure out how to like release it. I mean, if you guys got ideas, let me know. I was thinking we come out with a bunch of t-shirts in black and white. Who is the hot dog gang? And then we release a couple of viral videos that then come to a flash with Bobby with his fucking belly hanging out and mustard and ketchup on his fucking trousers. Just gobbling a hot dog real quick and just like a click blurt. I think we could do it. I mean, the liver king that made a money off of whatever the fuck he did. I think Bobby could do it. And I think he could fill the void. And I think if we don't lie about the steroids, <laughs> we'll be all right. Most importantly. Yeah, we'll just be honest. We're like, oh, he's eating nothing but hot dogs and steroids. And I'm like, all right. I guess hot dogs are healthier than we thought. So I recently deleted Instagram. Well, not like, like I'm still on it. Like you could see my profile. I usually download it once every time there's a podcast and release the podcast and then instantly delete it. 
it's funny how much that that it'll suck you in. Well, I gotta keep in mind every so often. I gotta sign in to talk to Chris. Those of you who don't know, my adopted son Chris. I gotta talk to him every so often. We only talk through Instagram, cause that's it. He's got like an iPhone Touch. That's good enough. I I think there's too much cell phone addiction and stuff like that, and I think Instagram proves it. Immediately, it's like, I'll get bored eventually, or I won't kill so much of my day or like an hour or two. Like, I got Facebook, but not the app. So I will go into Facebook, and then if you don't have the app, it doesn't have all those things that'll keep you stimulated. So you're like, all right, this is pretty boring. So I get off it. But I would love to get rid of Facebook, too. But there's one thing I need that I yearn for in my soul, and that's Facebook Marketplace. I need to wheel and deal. I've bought so much stuff off of Facebook Marketplace. I bought my building off of Facebook Marketplace. I bought my land off Facebook Marketplace. Bought my mats off Craigslist, but Facebook Marketplace killed Craigslist. So same shit. I couldn't even tell you. I bought so much off of Facebook Marketplace. And I'm just... I, I, I love the deal. I was just about to... Uh, so I was looking for some new gym equipment. Thinking of a new way I could hang bags. And then I saw a gym is selling all their equipment at Brainerd. And they're like, oh, we'll part some stuff out. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go there, buy their bag racks and some stuff that I think could use. But then a part of me is like, no, Tom, lowball them and get it all and then figure out where the heck you're going to put it. That would be a really good deal. I'm like, yeah, that would be a good deal. So I guess for my sake, I guess I'm lucky they've never returned my text or else I'd have more uh, monkeys jumping on the bed. You know what they say. There's too many monkeys jumping on the bed. So I need to get rid of Facebook, but keep the marketplace. Because I, I need to wheel and deal. That's how you get ahead in life. I haven't figured out. Is there a way to do it? No, that's how they suck you in. You're stuck to Facebook. Just tattoo a number on your fucking forehead. Because you're Facebooks. I can't see anybody taking that out, too. Like, Facebook Marketplace took out Offer Up, which I was also a pirate of Offer Up, a butt pirate of Offer Up. I'm also part of the, the foundation if you need to hire me for your gay parties. My stripper name is Andrew Taint. So one of the biggest hurdles I've had in these two years, it's gone on a little bit longer than two years because it takes time. Being an unorganized person and running a business. Like, business needs organization. A thousand percent. And being an unorganized person in your soul and your bones definitely is a more challenging hurdle. All right, guys, this has been the Militia MMA podcast. It's about all I got for you this week. Tune in. We may have a guest next next week or two. We may actually we may have to start recycling guests. I try to move around to try to get everybody in who's been here for some time. Those of you who don't know, I just kind of try to make sure I get all the people who have been here in year one first. Uh, year two would be second to year three, unless there's somebody's leaving for an emergency or there's something. I think it's super interesting. That's got to cut the line. Um, but we may have to start repeating. We got to get this done before kids class. So unfortunately, guys who have more time in the morning are a little bit more accessible than those who work nine to five, unfortunately. So don't, so don't think any of us repeating guests is any favoritism. It's just scheduling. This has been the Militia MMA Podcast. I'm your host and guest, Tom Galicchio. Stay tuned. We'll have somebody next week.